दिस इज लेक्चर नंबर फोर्टी टू ऑफ द कोर्स एम ई थ्री वन फोर फ्लूड मैकेनिक्स टू एंड द सेकेंड लेक्चर ऑफ दिस वीक वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अ फ्रेश टॉपिक ऑफ सी एफ डी एंड टूडे वी विल हैव एन इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ दिस इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक कंप्यूटेशन फ्लूड डायनामिक्स Uh, we will first go into what is uh, computational fluid dynamics is uh, and then we will go into its applications and scope and uh, we will look into the role what cfd can play in engineering and problem solving um, and then we will look into how actually cfd works and uh, uh, in the end we will look into the Uh, practical spec uh, steps by which uh, we can uh, solve our engineering problem uh, using uh, uh, cfd application so uh, what is uh, first instance before going into that we know what is fluid dynamics actually so fluid dynamics we know is the science of the fluid motion and uh, uh historically we have three ways of looking at the fluid dynamics problems so one of the first and the most primitive way is performing an experiment and then uh, people make mathematical model and uh, that emerges uh, the subject of fluid dynamics what is called as theoretical aspect uh and by the end of the uh, by this advent of the computers uh, we are able to solve such equations numerically so uh, that is actually the numerical aspect and uh, uh, the 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 uh, computers uh, make it more facile for solving such equations so uh, basically all three are the different modes uh, the theory experiment and numerical what you call it a cfd so they are not uh, taken as an isolated island so the whole uh, uh, numerical method is supported by the theory as well as by the experiment so if you perform an experiment uh, you develop the theory and uh, Uh, uh once you are solving the theory with numerically then it is actually uh, complementing both theory and experiment so so all three things are essential in the the study of the fluid, uh, the subject of fluid dynamics uh so theoretically we end up with some equations in experiment uh, we perform some experiments to visualize and uh, uh, or measure something Uh, and the same thing uh, we can do it in a virtual experiment what you call it um, uh, computational fluid dynamics is uh this subject of fluid dynamics is not just related with the fluid dynamics actually so this is uh, another misunderstanding that cfd is related with fluid dynamics actually it is uh, a common tool that is available and it has some wide applications so Uh, you can solve uh, fluid flow problems you can solve heat transfer problems uh, you can solve combustion problems uh, you can solve the problems of aerodynamics so there are some huge applications for example if there is a uh, electronic uh, packaging and uh, uh, the small circuits generating lot of heat and the heat has to be taken away by the uh some cooling media it could be air or it could be uh, uh cooling channels then this uh, problem can be resolved uh, uh using cfds so even in uh, environmental engineering uh, we know there are pollutants and pollutants are going to disperse and how they disperse once the uh, fluid is flowing so in cfd we are not just only dealing with the fluid domains uh, we will be dealing with the solid domains uh, we will be dealing with the fluid domains and we will be dealing with the so called uh, fluid solid interaction that is actually called fsi which is uh, uh, solid fluid to fluid solid interaction and even we can do things like uh, porous deal with the porous domains uh, we can uh, Uh, deal with some particle matters uh, we can um, uh, deal with the problems with uh, radiation so actually cfd includes not just fluid dynamics fluid dynamics is one of the basis uh, 
for solving the uh, problems and we know the problem is always dictated by the governing equations. So we could have the governing equations of mass, we could have the governing equations of momentum and we could have uh, the governing equations of energy. So um, this is a misunderstanding that CFD is only related with fluid. Right? So it, uh, chemical engineers, uh, uh, material engineers, uh, uh, mechanical engineers and everybody is using CFD to Okay, so in automotive applications, let's say we have performed certain experiments. So we got, let's say, some lift coefficient or some drag coefficient. So let's say an experimental drag coefficient. Once it is compared, uh, the best way is to plot uh, the experimental results as well as the numerical results, which you got it from the calculation. So if it follows the straight line, it means uh, your uh, calculation in your numerical result is uh, uh, somewhat uh, following your uh, experimental results. So uh, this is how we compare and uh, uh, so once you completely analyze the flow situation all its domains uh, that is actually called as uh, direct numerical simulation what you call it DNS and uh, uh, this is uh, the lift coefficient they have measured for that sports car. Uh, in aircraft, uh, the, this uh, uh, Airbus has designed the whole aircraft A380 uh, without uh, experiment. Actually, the whole aircraft has been designed on computer. So uh, that shows uh, that uh, how uh, modern day how much is the level of uh, numerical uh, methods have gone into that depth so that the whole thing can be. Uh, analyze and here for example the blue ones are the frequently used uh, applications and uh, the green one is a moderate use and the red one is the growing use so if you see it in order to design the fuselage the body so this is actually the common one and uh, high speed wing design so all these wing designs can be uh, uh, the tail design this uh, uh, stabilizer designs this ruder designs uh, even this uh, static deformation can be done using computers and so this wing tip design can be done with computers and for this uh, engines this inlet and design this power plant can be modeled using computers so a lot of things can be modeled and uh, nowadays even the avionics and this uh, ventilation is starts growing and uh, uh, at the high altitude there is uh, uh, a formation of ice on different surfaces so that production can be done using the models and so um, uh, uh, as you know the aircraft is producing noise so this external noise to be reduced in the uh, design improvement so nowadays uh, this is something uh, uh, the growing application. So there are a lot of applications uh, using uh, uh, CFD can be uh, in, in, in different areas, not just fluid mechanics, but uh, vibrations, uh, uh, solid mechanics and uh, uh, power plant engineering and even in electronics, uh, one can use uh, CFD as a tool. Uh, what is actually CFD? Uh, one of the way by which we can define is uh, if fluid flows, uh, which is actually governed by, we know the partial differential equations, the governing equations of mass, momentum and energy. So what is, uh, we can say from the knowledge, from the uh, background of mathematics that CFD is actually that R which by which by which all these differential equations are partial differential equations. So uh, these partial differential equations cannot be solved for actual problems. So we uh, we turn that PDEs into set of algebraic equations, and then these uh, set of algebraic equations can be solved using uh, digital computers. So CFD can be thought of that R by which we convert the partial differentials into algebraic equations. Uh, one another way by which we can define that CFD provides a qualitative and a quantitative way of uh, 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 modeling uh, the uh, fluid flows 
uh, and it has an ability of predicting. So how we do that, first we make it a mathematical model and then we uh, 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 turn that mathematical model which is actually always some partial differential equation into some algebraic set of equations and this technique is called as uh, discretization techniques. So you have uh, some numerical methods uh, which actually turn these PDEs into set of algebraic equations. And then we have some solution techniques which solve those set of algebraic equations. And nowadays computers uh, to, as a tools are available uh, which uh, helps us in um, uh, performing uh, all these uh, uh, steps uh, at one integral platform. And uh, uh, for most of the softwares having the uh, options of uh, 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 pre-processing, processing and post-processing. So uh, uh, another way by which we can define the subject of CFD is a computer-based design and analysis tool used to solve the set of coupled non-linear PDEs arising from fit flow heat transfer or other physical processes over a region of interest and that region of interest is actually called as domain. Uh, under specified conditions, uh, it could be boundary conditions as well as initial conditions depending upon whether it is a time dependent problem or a space dependent problem. So or what we call it a boundary value problem or a time value problem from the background of uh, uh, differential equations. So, there are different definitions which are so in all these definitions uh, you see I have uh, bold three different letters so CFD could be an art could be a uh, tool could be uh, uh, something which has an ability to predict so all these uh, are different definitions but uh, the last definition is the most comprehensive one uh, what role CFD plays in engineering is, uh, as we know, engineering means we are solving the problems. We are uh, uh, having something to design and we conceptualize and then uh, we have to make it a prototype and that is actually then in the later we have to develop it at so called product development and once the product has been developed. Uh, it has certain problems associated so one has to troubleshoot and in this way have to redesign things so um, so CFD can help at all these stages from the conceptual stage from the product development stage from the troubleshooting or operation stage and if you have to redesign retrofit then CFD can help you in all that. Uh, so basically, CFD analysis is uh, is is uh, is complementing your experimentations, your testing, and uh, as we know in experiments, a lot of efforts are required to undertake an experiment. Uh, but uh, the virtual experiment on computers can be performed uh, with uh, less amount of effort and less cost. So uh, in engineering, obviously, we are interested in improving our efficiency, we are improving the product reliability, we are uh, interested in making safe uh, products and services, uh, we are interested in uh, predicting behaviors. So all such purposes uh, which we need in engineering, problem solving, uh, CFD can help us in that. Uh, I mean obviously in reality the things are physical system is something else but what we need is all these uh, physical uh, systems to be translated into a mathematical model and uh, obviously we have to make simplifications uh, uh, once we develop model and then these models to be solved numerically. So uh, one of this guy has it's, uh, quoted that all models are wrong but some models are useful so that's it that is why we are going to develop models and these models uh, to be uh, have an ability to predict and forecast so that is actually the advantage so CFD can help in uh, uh, engineering analysis so before uh, sometimes even before product development you will be able to see what faults are and how you can improve your design so that you don't need to put cost, huge cost in product development and prototyping and 
uh, testing. So all this would be saved using uh, can be saved using CFD. Uh, so, for example, uh, I have one practical problem. For example, there was a fluid flow from one of the channel, and that fluid has to become fully developed after a certain length. So, uh, what I have actually done is uh, I just put a sieve of uh, three slots so that flow develops at a shorter length, and then I could do that. So the problem was to reduce the length by which your velocity becomes fully developed. So first instance we put a three sieves and then later we put a large number of sieves so that the flow becomes developed or reach that uh, velocity in a shorter length. So uh, one can have infinite possibility of doing it uh, on CFD. So this is what actually I have done it uh, uh, while doing uh, PhD in Germany. Uh, how actually CFD works? Uh, so first thing is uh, let's say there is a process of filling the bottle. So we need to define our domain of interest what uh, and outside the domain of interest there is uh, we don't need to bother what is happening outside. So the first step is to convert that physical problem into the language of mathematics uh, and that always happens uh, by employing the governing equations. Uh, these governing equations are of mass, momentum, energy. So that all has to be satisfied in the given domain or the region of interest. Uh, then we need to uh, model empirically the fluid properties whether they are uh, temperature dependent or viscosity is changing with temperature or density is changing with temperature. So all these fluid properties to be modeled. And then we have to obviously uh, uh, make certain assumptions like our problem whether it is a steady state problem or whether where the viscous effects are taken into an account or not or instead of dealing with the three dimensions if you are dealing with the two dimensions so all these uh, simplifications uh, can be done and then obviously we need to specify the boundary conditions as well as the initial conditions so when time is zero what is the temperature at the surface or uh, 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 no slip boundary conditions and all these boundary conditions to be uh, provided in solving uh, in, uh, in the domain of interest. Uh, the first once you have identified the uh, physics as uh, well as the boundary conditions then you have to divide your domain into some uh, small region what you call it a mesh or grid. So, uh, so that we can see uh, our governing equations should be satisfied uh, uh, in that region of uh, uh, interest and uh, 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 numerically these uh, governing equations to be solved in those small uh, volumes what you call it a finite volumes. Uh, once you have solved then uh, the result can be processed what is actually called as post processing. So whatever the parameter of interest uh, for us whether lift drag or um, separation point or pressure loss coefficient whatever uh, we can uh, uh, process is uh, uh, by solving the governing equations in that uh, domain. Uh, as the CFD is being performed by uh, with the, uh, using uh, uh, software so uh, you need hardware and you need human being which is actually uh, solving the problem and uh, the effectiveness of the solution always lies with uh, how you have actually modeled the problem so that is based on the scientific knowledge what uh, is required for uh, uh, converting the physical world into mathematical expression and then you need uh, uh, um, knowledge of algorithms by which this uh, uh, mathematical uh, model which is a partial differential equations turn into algebraic set of equations and then we need uh, to, uh, algorithms to solve those uh, set of algebraic equations uh, and uh, so a lot of at, uh, different places uh, there is a possibility of making errors. 
so uh, because uh, it could be a numerical error or it could be a truncation error because uh, not all the terms is taken into an account or it could be the uh, even the result has uh, once the result has come these results uh, to be interpreted correctly and uh, human beings are uh, bound to make mistakes so uh, mistakes could be at the model building could be in interpretation or could be with the software or even sometimes there are some limitations of hardware as well so we can say that cfd is actually a tool which is highly interdisciplinary and you need a knowledge of the physics mathematics engineering computer science so all uh, such knowledge is required in solving the real life problems so cfd can be thought of as interdisciplinary uh, uh, tool uh, practically what we do is uh, we have actually this five step journey uh, first the domain of interest is uh, built as a CAD model so it is actually called as geometry and then this geometry is divided into small volumes what you call it uh, making a mesh or a grid and then you have to apply a physics uh, and uh, once uh, the model has been built then this model to be solved and once you have solved then this model to be uh, seeing the result so once you have a, a pre uh, pre processor then processor and then once you have solved it then it is actually called as uh, post processing after getting the result the results to be visualized and that uh, visual representation can be done on tools like post processing tools so geometry building uh, is the first step uh, and we know there are two ways uh, of building geometry either from uh, top to down approach or bottom to up approach for example bottom to up approach is you first define a point and uh, joining the two points define a line and once you have uh, two lines or four lines that would make an area and different areas would make that volume so that is actually bottom up approach or if you could have a top down approach it means first you have an object and then you either add or subtract by uh, uh, applying the boolean operators you will be able to get your required shape whether a and b to be joined then you have this shape and if uh, a part uh, a, b, uh, the circle is subtracted from the square then you end up with that thing or if you are interested in the common portion between A and B, then you will be interested in that shape. So this approach is called as a top to down approach. So nowadays there are so many CAD tools available to develop geometries. And there is a flexibility wherever you can develop your geometry. Uh, and the second step is developing a mesh and there are different types of meshes like tetrahedral mesh or uh, sometimes you have this structured mesh and structured mesh means the number of nodes uh, on the opposite uh, sides are equal in number so you don't have any uh, discontinuity between them and if you combine the tetrahedral mesh with the structured mesh it is actually called as a hybrid mesh so there are so many ways and so many techniques of uh, developing the grid and the mesh. So this is one of the art that is uh, required in uh, 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 solving the problem using CFD. And obviously this is uh, important step of in the mathematical language because uh, as we know in reality we always deal with a continuous domain what we do is we divide the domain into small elements or small volumes so we are only interested in information at the center of those volumes so we have to turn our continuous domain into discrete domain and that process is actually called as uh, discretization so uh, our governing equations uh, could be generalized in this format. Uh, this is an unsteady term. This is an advection term where we have velocity component. There is a diffusion term uh, and there is a source term. So, for example, if phi is 1 here, then this equation becomes a continuity equation. If, uh, if phi is replaced with u, then it becomes an x-momentum equation. And if uh, uh, phi is replaced with v, then it is a y-momentum equation. And if phi is replaced with h, which is enthalpy, then this becomes an energy equation. So, 
uh, in solvers there is not separate equations for every governing equation so what they do is they just just change the parameter and you can turn your model uh, physics uh, from continuity momentum and energy all can be uh, solved with one set of equations and what we do is there as a differential volume so that region of interest to be solved and you have to make sure that uh, uh, the governing equations to be satisfied in that domain uh in in practice actually what people do is uh, they first need to, to first make it a, a geometry and mashing after that they need to apply the physics so uh, in software this is actually sometimes called as pre processing so your problem to be selected and you need to make different models whether it's a, a compressible flow incompressible flow whether it is uh, turbulence to be included or not whether combustion to be included or not or whether it's a single phase or a multi phase problem or if you are using different materials for, so you have to define the properties of those materials and your boundary conditions your initial conditions and even your solver setup and your solution of your numerical solution convergence can be monitored in that pre processing time so that is actually the first step and in the second step uh, we solve that problem and in that solving the problem this uh, whole uh, uh, governing equations to be satisfied in each control volume so you could have a discrete solution at all uh, these points uh, you have point solutions and uh, sometimes these equations are not able to converge so uh, uh, you have to look into conservation and uh, uh, and sometimes uh, in the modeling you ignore the few of the truncation terms then uh, you compromise on the accuracy of your result so if you have some finer grid then your result get improved so that study is actually called as grid independence study and uh, a lot of things associated in solving the problem so um, it's better shown once we do it on a software once we have solved it then the last thing is to visualize the results so all those results can be visualized that is actually called as uh, uh, post processing and uh, there are separate tools available in softwares for pre processing processing and post processing so this is actually the last step in uh, so practically speaking practically solving the problem the first step is applying the physics and then solving which is uh, processing and then once you have solved it and converge your results then you need to post process the results so this is where i end the introduction today's introduction to cfd